Hi guys, welcome to mine and Aaron's Ultimate Amex 11. We've picked our players from the draft and Aaron, how are you feeling about that? I'm very glad. I'm very, very glad. We got most of the players we wanted. I think yeah. better, probably maybe one or two we didn't get, but other than that, yeah, one or two we didn't get. Other than that, I, it's, it's worked in our favour massively. Yeah, I couldn't I be happier. I think the picks we got, I was really pleased with. I think we were quite uh, responsive. So, uh, for instance, Seb uh, uh, Yoli was on our list. And obviously he was. he was our backup left back. So then we quickly, um, you know, had a little chat and got Liam Rossini in there. So I think we were quite reactive, which was decent. Our mm -hmm. injury list is uh, Tom Ahmed, Ashley Barnes and Luar Luar, none of whom were going to be starting. Um, so I think the injury wheel has been kind. <clears throat> uh, the picks were decent. We got the manager we wanted. Um, so let's pick our 11 from our draft. So I suppose to start with goalkeeper, goalkeeper picks himself, no? Sexy it doesn't. Pete. No, no, it, it is not a sexy pick, that is for sure. And uh, no, it'd be, yeah, Bob, it'd be uh, Bobby Sanchez. Oh, look, look at that, the uh, tech guys behind the uh, behind the scenes are, yeah, big Bobby, Bobby Sanchez in goal. Has to be, uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, fantastic uh, shot stopper, really good at climbing balls um, from corners and crosses. Um, so, yeah, really happy with that pick. Um, so we're going to line up in a classic Gus Poyet 3-3-3. 4-3-3. There we go. 4-3-3. Um, so let's start with the right back and captain uh, Bruno. I don't think that will come as a surprise to anyone um, playing El Capitan at right back. So then... this is the bit, I suppose, when we start having these discussions about which centre-backs we're going to go for. Because we've got Matty Upson, got Ben White, Connor Goldson and Adam Alad. So who do you reckon then, Aaron? I would I would personally go Ben White and Matt Upson. Yep. Um they're the two two quality centre backs we've got in, in our in our team. Yeah. And in if we're going to prime squads, as well, prime Matty Upson, is prime, yeah. It's gonna be excellent. And I think they 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 complement each other very well because uh, Ben do. White he's gonna be fantastic at bringing that ball out of defence. Um and Matty Upson's gonna be that rock at the back who, you know, thou shalt not pass. So Really happy with those. Um, and then uh, as our left back, our starting pick, we're going to go for Wayne Bridge. You know, again, one of those players that I'm really glad we got. If we're talking prime Wayne Bridge, um, what, a, what a pick to have. You exactly, know? what a pick. What a pick. What a player as well. My no. in, his, in his prime, he was so good. So, so good. Even for us, he was so, so good. He was. And yeah. you think about him coming to us, in that second season at the Amex, it was it was incredible mm. that a, a player of his calibre was you know coming to play with us. I know we'd obviously no, it really was. You know, Vicente obviously uh, came this season before, but having an England in, a former England international was it was mind blowing. So yeah, back five all sorted. Then I've got Bobby Sanchez in goal. Back four from right to left: uh, Bruno, Ben White, Matty Upson, and Wayne Bridge. Um, and because we're playing in that 4-3-3 style, we're going to have a player just sitting just in front of uh, the back four uh, in Liam Bridcut. Um, and I'm really glad we got Liam Bridcut because I genuinely think that with the style we're going to play, he's the man you want sitting in front of that back four. Fantastic inter interceptor of the ball. Um, and our manager, Gus Puyet, he once said that no one understood the way he wanted to play more than Liam Bridcut. And Gary Dicker, and we got Liam Bridcut, so that's uh, that's excellent. Really happy with that pick. So I suppose Aaron. Then the question becomes: We're going to play a three in midfield. Yeah. Who's going to play just in front of Bridcut? Are we going to go all out class in Vicente and Lalana, or are we going to play one of those two with a maybe a more box to box midfielder? See, so, uh, I've put down. More class. I put down Vicente and Lallana, but I feel like we could get overpowered in the midfield if we did that. Yeah. So for that for that sense, I would go for Vicente, hundred percent. Yeah. And so then the rest of our picks, just to remind the people at home. So the rest of our picks include Dale Stevens, uh, Roman Ince, 
Baram Kyle and Andr- Andrea Orlandi. Randy. So Out of me, who would you who would you go for? Who would you go for? For me, it's either going to be one of Stevens or Kyle because I think they give that more that box to box to box versatility. And out of the two, I'd probably go with KL. I think he offers more going forward than um, than Dale Stevens. Okay, I would have gone. I, I I also probably would have gone Dale Stevens. <laughs> um, I, I, think, I think I think I think, Kyle, I think you're right. Kyle going forward would offer us offer us more. We don't need a defensive player. Baram Stevens, <laughs> um, I think Baram's think, decent in the tackle, so yeah. I think he's going to be one of those players that he can do the defensive work, but he can also go forward and assist. Forward where, so, where Stevens yeah. doesn't really have that. Yeah, I, I, I would. Yeah, no. Let's go, Bram Kyle. Let's go, Kyle. Then fantastic. So already that for me, that as a team is really strong, and I don't. I think we could boss the midfield quite easily with those three. Yeah, we got the creative. I agree. Vente, we got the tenacity of Kyle, and then we've got the midfield general and Liam Bridco, who's just going to sit back, spray passes, intercept. It's going to be, it's going to be carnage. It is going to be carnage. It's going to be a beautiful thought. <laughs> so then our front three. So we're going classic front three. Um, just to remind the listeners who we've got. So in terms of our front picks, we picked uh, Anthony Notcar. We picked uh, Will Buckley. Glenn Murray, Tom Ahmed, Ashley Barnes, Solly March, and Luar Luar. Now, unfortunately, Tom Ahmed, Ashley Barnes, and Luar Luar were our injury hit players. So that obviously weakens our up top. But I think even with the players we've got left, we've got a very dangerous front three going very forward. Very dangerous. So I don't know if you know this, Aaron, but we've got not car. Anthony, we've got that. Anthony Knockout. I just we don't have. understand. He only costs two mil. He's better than Urzil. We've got Anthony Knockout. I think playing Anthony Knockout on that right in front of Bruno, you know, their relationship that they had um, when they played together was electric. It was fantastic. Bruno on the overlap, Anthony Knockout's work rate coming back to defend. So I think that's a really strong partnership on the right hand side. And, and similarly, on the left-hand side of that front three, uh, we're going to go with Solly March. Um, I think Solly March is a, a really underrated player. Um, you know, he's a fantastic crosser of the ball. Um, and he can also tie the op- opposition defenders in knots when he wants to. Um, but more importantly, I think, is his work rate with the defensive side. And I think when you've got someone like Wayne Bridge, who's going to be bombing on forward as well, it's good to have that Solly March, you know, to keep that left-hand side nice and tight um, so he can offer that defensive cover if Bridge gets caught upfield. So, Could not agree more. Could not agree. Everything you said was absolutely spot on. And then our final player in our 11 um, should yeah. come to no surprise. Adam Alab. <laughs> Alab, Alab. Do, 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 do. <laughs> I mean, I'm just going to say this. I, I, Adam Elab might be one of those picks that a lot of people at home or maybe even uh, Joe and Toby have gone, why have they picked Adam Elab? And we said in the group chat beforehand, just for the dressing room, I think. Just for the vibes. Just for the vibes, because Adam Elab, what a player to have. You know, fantastic servant to our club uh, during his time here. He was one of those players that when he left, I felt really upset. Stop typing Sir Sexy Pete backstage, guys. <laughs> We're talking about how much I love Adam Alad. Yeah, let's face it. Glenn Murray up top, Brighton and Hove Albion's top scorer, I believe. He's our top scorer, is he not, in the top divisions? Yes, he is. Well, no brainer there. He's going to, you know, he'll do what Glenn Murray does. He'll be fantastic attacking balls into the box from Solly and Anthony Knockhart, and he'll be good defensively at corners. Um, so I look at that team, I don't think they can beat us. I don't know where they would think they'd be stronger than us, if I'm honest. No, I think if we're talking prime players as well, I think we've just got it all over the pitch. Um, yeah, I'm ha- I'm really happy with our starting eleven. We've got a good bench. Uh, we've got uh, vers- versatility in Liam Rossinia. We've got Rowan Ince to come in and, uh, you know, he could sit in front of the back four because he had a fantastic season there with yeah. us. Got Lalan to come on for Vicente or for Kyle if things aren't going our way. 
we've just got creativity. We've got pace and Will Buckley. We've got leadership. We've got everything. You know, we've got it all over so we, the pitch. We can move Ben White into midfield if needs to be. As well. yeah, exactly. we've got that much and I think that's what Liam Briggs does as well. I think yeah, Ben agree, White, yeah. his strength is obviously bringing the ball out of uh, defence. And when you've got someone like Liam Bridcut who can just, you know, sit back, almost slot into a back four, you know, I think it's just, 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 it's excellent. I, I just, I'm looking forward to seeing what they've come up with because I just, I can't, I can't see how they're going to win. I really can't. So if you're happy with that, Aaron, I'm happy with that. I'm very yeah. happy with that. Let's get the boys back and let's, uh, let's see what's what. Well, well, well. Toby, mate, you're on mute. There you go. <laughs> um, yeah, well, well, well. You really think that team's good enough to beat us? We've got, got Liam Bridcut, mate. To we've got fair. Liam Bridcut in that midfield. Well, and we've, saying, got, we're win. we've got Eve Basuma. That's all I'm saying. Listen, I'm going to make one argument and one argument alone. Go. Glenn Murray's going to be tired by the 50th minute, mate. And who have you got to bring on? Well, the thing is, you've got to remember about Glenn Murray. His his game has never been running around. His game has always been casually strolling around, just waiting for the right moment. And that's all he needs. It's all he needs. And I think I do understand because we have we we obviously lack strength in depth. Worst case scenario, we, we could play a false nine. We could put Lalana up there. We could put Vicente up there in that sort of false nine position. You know, we've got Buckley come on pace for days. You know, if Buckley came on. You know, that front three is going to terrorise any defence. You've not seen our defence, mate. Honestly, <laughs> it is a brick wall upon a brick wall upon another solid brick wall. Um, then, boys, I... all I need to say to you is Prime Vicente. You want someone yeah, to unlock well... that brick wall? Prime Vicente will. Let's have a look at our prime defenders then, shall Let's we? Get, man. I Let's think it's it. time we reveal. Obviously, we've seen yours because yeah. we were the <laughs> annoying guys backstage changing your spreadsheet. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, so it's time to reveal our team, Toby. Um, take a look at that, boys. Just take a look at that. We beat that. No, you don't. We beat that. No, think... no, we're talking prime. So we we're still talking. Beat that. Prime goal scoring Danny Welbeck for England. We're talking a back three of probably, as Toby said, three of the, the best English centre backs going that don't get picked for England. Um, Steve Sidwell in his prime covering for that defence. And Eve Basuma bombing forward, winning balls, box to box, good as you like. And a front three of Leandro Trossard, Neil Morpé, and a all firing Danny Welbeck with, by the way, Jesse Lingard, Leonardo Ujoa, Izquierdo, and Craig Noon as options to come off the bench if we're struggling. So, uh, no argument. Toby <laughs> add, add, adds to my overpowering statement of us winning. I mean, I'm going to reiterate your points, basically, but you look at that defence, you look at it, and I want you to look at it good, because that is a defence that is not <laughs> conceding a single goal all season. This team would go invincible, given the, all of them in their prime. Like yeah. like Joe said, I've, I pointed out Danny Welbeck for England, when he was at his tip-top condition, guy was scoring every week for England. You know, he was an unbelievable player. We're looking at a Neil Morpé who is going to rustle feathers. He's good for a 98th minute winner. He's he's good for scoring goals, penalties, whatnot. And we've against got, Ben White. We've Neil got, Morpé we've got, against Ben White. And oh, Matt Upson, on. prime Matt Upson. That's even if they can get past Liam Bridker and Kyle. <laughs> and then you look at our midfield as well. I mean, you're talking two of the... the Top, top, topest midfielders there are. Obviously, Eve Basuma, you know, he's self proclaimed best in the Premier League. You've got Steve Sidwell, who, who in his day probably was one of the better generals of the midfield in the Premier League. I mean, I, I really struggle to see how our team, you know, it's got pace, it's got width, it's got versatility. Every player can do a job everywhere. It's structured well. You've got a brilliant manager like Graham Potter behind it. We've got brilliant options off the bench versus your very Just good for without a plan B. But yeah, plan A is plan B. 
<laughs> I don't get me wrong, boys. I think you've got a strong team, but I think ours is just as strong. I think, you know, I think you're right. I think, you know, Webster, Dunk and Tamori, that's a good back three. I think Lamptey's is, you know, obviously very strong. I think where you might fall down is consistency of the front three. Neil Mope, is he the most consistent striker? Not, well, not as consistent as Glenn Murray. And oh, wait, I've got a question for you, actually. If mm. Zamora wasn't injured, would you have started Zamora yes. over Mope? Yeah. So if, you had <laughs> yes. had, if you'd had Zamora up top, I'd be a bit more worried. But Mope... <laughs> I, I don't Here's a question for you, then. Here's a question for you. Would you have been more, more worried if we started Leo Ujoa over Neil Mope? Because he, yes. he's on our bench. Yes. I would, See, have been, I would have been I, more I, concerned over Ujoa than Mope. I think Mo, Ujoa was one of our picks um, he was. behind Murray. Murray was, our, was. Our, one of our strikers, but I wanted we wanted Ujoa as well. I think you've got a stronger bench attacking-wise than us. Don't get me wrong. Um, you know, you've got some decent players in there. But Jesse Lingard, he's, he's decent, but he's not prolific. This is prime. Danny Welbeck, he's decent, but he's not <laughs> prolific. If you look at his stats, they're not amazing. They're all in their prime, no. They're all in their prime, yeah, and yeah. and the, the one reason I, I put Morpé in there instead of Yujoa, and this is the point I raised to Joe, is that Neil Morpé's best Premier League season beats Yujoa's by yeah. a good four goals. That's so uh, you know, I, I do think that Neil Morpé is going to be more to the team than just goals because like I say, Danny Welbeck coming in from the left which he has played there throughout his career and in his prime he, for England he played on the left quite often yeah you're looking at the current version of Trossard which is just takes on every defender and, and to be honest I don't see how Ben White's going to be able to handle someone like Trossard just dancing around him um, it, Trossard, but we've all seen whereas Brighton fans we've all seen those games like against Wolves where Trossard barely has a touch I think where yeah but we're talking the prime, game will be won and lost. we're talking about their best the, game all, all of these players are having the best game possible yeah, but then but then you look at our team we've got out of all these picks we've got the best player we've got Vicente yeah, you do have Vicente, that but that's but that's Vicente. one player. That's one player. You've got yeah, Liam Bridge, sure. Vicente, Wayne Bridge, Matty Upson at his on his best day. Liam Bridge probably, and you're going to hate me for saying this, but Matty Upson on his best day, the only defender on that pitch who's going to come close is Lewis Dunk. Lewis Dunk's Matty, better. Lewis Matty Dunk's Upson's miles better. better. Matty Upson's better than Webster. He's better than Tamori. He's definitely not better than Dunk. Hard Aaron, Dunk's mate, not than Dunk. you 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 haven't had a say yet. So where do you think our weaknesses are? Don't say your whole team. <laughs> where do you think our weaknesses are against your your picks? Midfield, personally, I think if you take take out well, I say. Take out Basuma and Sidwell, you've got not really great deal on the bench, if I'm honest. Uh, prime for Sente would run rings around 90% of your team. Uh, and like Tom just said, Upton, Prime Matthew Upson, Prime Wayne Bridge, Prime Bruno as well, my ad. It's going to be hard to break down. It's going to be hard to break down. And then going forward, Prime Knockout, Prime Murray. Knockout assists for days, Murray scores for days. Yeah, and we've got Lalana on the bench. Can I exactly. point out, Anthony Knockout for me always struggled against pacey fullbacks. He'd be going up against Mark Kukurea. Um, and, Kukurea, Kukurea, Kukurea. Yeah. and if he plays on the other side, he's up against Tarek Lamptey. Yeah. Kukurea, Kukurea, Kukurea isn't that good. He's not he's blistering. Pretty... He's not blistering pace. He's not Lamptey. Lamptey. No. That's true. He's, he, he's quick. But he's not like he he is he's not a pace man. He he's yeah. Plus, I think aware. Kukurea, I think he's good going forward, but I think he'd struggle defensively against Knockhart when he's on when he's on his day. If you think um, well, you know. one thing one thing I've got to say, boys, is listen. We we can argue our cases day and That's night there. here, <laughs> but we've got to put it to a vote now. It's got to be down to the viewers, the listeners at Albion Obsessed on Twitter. I don't think we're going to be able to decide this, boys. I don't no. think that we can come to a mutual conclusion yeah. here because I, no. I think that ours blows you out of the water. You think that yours blows ours out of the water. So let's see what the, the people think. Let us know at Albion Obsessed. We'll put a graphic up. I'm not sure if it will put it up before the 
video and podcast is live or, or what. But we'll put a poll up, make it last seven days or something, and then we can we can review it and maybe give a few short videos or something that we can put yeah. on Twitter, review the re- yeah. results. But I'm you pretty what, sure it's, it's a 70-30. So you What's know that? what the most out- the most likely outcome? 50-50. And nil nil draw. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, I wish we had a way to see see this play out um in this front of a, us. This would be a game that I would just I would pay a lot of money to see. Oh, 100%. Do you know what though? Let, I how about maybe as a follow-up episode? I'm pretty certain I can do this sort of thing on I'm football manager. manager. Funny enough, that was going through my mind earlier. Uh, let's see, right, let's see how if if I can if I can get that up and I can do that because I'll need to get obviously the, the players from their primes and and give them the yeah. right stats and stuff from when yeah. they were in their prime. If I can if I can get to work on that, see if that's possible, or see if that's something that that I can do. Let's let's do it. Let's see how the game 100%. plays out. We Albion Obsessed is coming with some heavy, heavy content in the new year. Yeah. Um, so as Toby said, we can argue this all day. Um, this has been an amazing uh, few episodes. Um, as Toby said as well, this was our Christmas special um, with his wonderful little Christmas hat on his <laughs> microphone, uh, which made me giggle like a little schoolgirl. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah. So I'll I'll try and edit this and, and put it out as soon as possible. <laughs> He's wearing the hat again. Um, and yeah, uh, until then, obviously you guys have an amazing Christmas. I'm sure we'll chat in the group chat uh, and before you, yeah. then. Um, and we will reconvene after Christmas uh, once this video is out in the um, universe to see which team is going to win. And I really hope we can do that football manager thing because that would be, be awesome very entertaining um for sure so yeah uh thanks for watching guys if you have bed with us uh throughout these three episodes you are a saint uh because we can't even count so i don't know how you're listening to us i think aaron's yeah. frozen oh no he's good no, um, i'm moving no, I'm <laughs> <laughs> yeah. cool right yeah take care guys up the albion and see you soon bye-bye merry christmas merry, merry christmas, christmas guys <laughs> bye